All right, so this is part two of this video. And what we've done up to this point is we've gone into Google Tag Manager and I've shown you how to create tags. Um, if you didn't see that, you're gonna wanna go back to the previous video where we created the Google Tag Manager, a couple of, of new variables and events where if they click the phone button, um, if you look at this website, if they're clicking, uh, let's go to our website here, um, Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager 2021 here, uh, if we go to fitness taxes, we just tested, we just got done seeing that if I click this button or if I fill out this form, what happened was is we went into analytics and we saw that there is, the event was getting fired by a tag and a trigger in Google Analytics. So we, we set up the triggers of click to phone and email form. We use those in simple tags and it's a Google Analytics tag that fires so that we can see it and it's created an event. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep building this out and it's the fundamentals of good, um, really the foundations of our marketing machine. So I tell you what, if you develop site, if you're a designer, if you love web design and you're doing this, you wanna partner with somebody that can help you with paid search ads, help your clients really um, accomplish things and get sales, go to feedbackrench.com or if you're a small business owner and if you want to be able to deploy things in a, in a high protein manner, boy, we got your back. We're a small team, Feedback Wrench. I've um, been doing this for about six years now. Before that, I had an accounting and tax practice. We help construction businesses, home services, accounting businesses, professional financial services, stuff like that. We do websites, we build sweet ads, and we do video and SEO. So if you want help with that, boy, give us a call, especially if you build sites in Webflow, that's our preferred thing. We can make life much easier for you and do some of this stuff. If you're just a designer, boy, that's great. So here's where we're at. We've got an event that just fired. Now what I want to do is I'm just going to take note of these two names specifically, and we're going to create a conversion and they're in Google Analytics. And the reason why we're doing this is I want to be able to see in Google Analytics, where are my conversions actually happening? What, whether it's the medium, is it coming from social media? Is it coming from a campaign? Whatever it is, I want to be able to track that. And the way you do that is we're going to go into the settings here and we're going to set up what's called a goal. And the goal is basically your conversion. So I already know one of them is called FT form. That, that's pretty easy. I'm just going to paste this because I don't have that good a memory. And what I'm going to do is come down to admin. Okay, and in admin, there's a goals tab. So this is setting up goals in 2021 on Google Analytics, the UA property. Again, if you remember, there's a G4 property. We're not going to touch that, but here's what we're going to do. Hit new goal. And the new goal has all, there's a template. I just use custom every time. I don't know. So instead of selecting all these, I'm going to do custom. I'm going to hit continue. And I'm going to call this, what is this one? This one's the phone click, FT phone click, right? So I'm just gonna call it the same thing, FT phone click. And what it, now, so this is going to be a goal, it's a custom goal type. The description, I'm gonna call it FT phone clip, fitness taxes phone clicked. And now how is that going to be measured? Well, it's when this event happens, and which event, I'm gonna hit continue, and it's the event that's action called FT phone click. And if I hit verify this goal, uh, we just made it so it, it's not going to show much, but uh, I'm going to hit save. And I, I just know darn well that I've got everything correct there because I just look. So when the event action called FT phone click goes, that's going to be called the FT phone click goal description. I just keep things the same and I hit save. So that's the first one. And then the second one I want to make is FT form. So let's hit new goal. Again, I just go to custom hit next or continue and I'm going to do FT form is what I'm going to name it. And that's when an event happens. And that event is the, just don't use category, just use this distinct one, FT form, right? And I'm going to hit verify this goal and it was probably never, and I'm going to hit save. It should show something eventually there. Now you can turn the recording of these goals on and off, but let me show you where that, why this is important. Okay. What you do is you come over to your audience, or let's just say, so in Google Analytics, and this is worth looking at, um, you have a couple different types of reports. You have your acquisition, which is how you got something, the behavior, which is how they're acting when they're on there, your conversions, which is what we just set up. And this is where you could just do like an overview of the conversions, and this would show you, um, you know, the source of the medium. Well, we just set this up, so none of it's there. 
Uh, but you also have like the audience. You can look into the people and there's some really interesting things. In fact, maybe we'll dive into that real quick. Let's overview Google Analytics for 2021. I'm going to show you my feedback wrench one. And that's pretty easy for me to show you because I have a little bit of all of this set up. So if you come to the home here, let's just kind of overview what we're seeing. So what we see here is over the last seven days, you know, we have users and sessions. Remember, the users are the number of people that have gotten there. The sessions are how many like actual pages. So 1,100 people came and that stimulated 13, 1,300 impressions. Average session duration is 59 seconds, which is kind of ugly this week compared to usual. And then we have eight, an 81% bounce rate. Well, that might seem stunning, but let me show you exactly where that comes from. So now what I can do is I can go to real time and real time is the stuff that's happening right now. And what I can see is that there's probably one or two people that have hit that thing. Um, I can look at the locations of where, where they are right now and they're all right here. But, you know, I don't have a really cool website. I have a good website, but it's not that interesting. It's a website about websites. So I don't have any I don't have anybody on there right now. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the behavior and the behavior has a cut. So here's my favorite reports in Google Analytics. OK, the behavior, if you go to overview, this one's kind of neat. It shows you some interesting stuff. Um, but what you should know is up here, you have to be paying attention to the time frame that you're looking at. So this is from June 14th to June 2021. I'm going to make this to be the last 30 days. You can make it custom, right? We could say seven days, 30 days, the last week. Let's do the last 30 days, okay? And here's what I'm going to show you. There's another one down here. You have the behavior flow. That's kind of interesting. Let's just look at site content. And I want to look at all the pages. And let's find out what pages are getting traffic. Now, there's the page and the page title. Generally speaking, you're going to stick, stick with the page. There's a little discrepancy there. But here's what I'm going to show you what I'm seeing on my end here. So when you just see the forward slash like that, that's just your home page. So in my instance here, I have 1,800 page views from 1,400 unique page views. So this is people not hitting it twice. The average time on page is a minute and 36 seconds. I had 1,400 entrances. I had about a 66% bounce rate, which is okay. And the exit, how many people left from this page is 63%. It's kind of interesting. The other one that I have is I've got the accountant website, which if I hit this little button here, I can see where that was. This is um, a specific landing page that I have. Now this just pops up because it's like, ah, you're too small. Um, this is a site built for accountants, this landing page. And, and I can see a lot of the same stuff. Look at how my average time on page went way up. Multi and, and now you'll see there's some posts. So I have, I have an, a blog post. This is a blog post. Look at the average time on page. Six and a half minutes. Five and a half minutes. That's pretty long. Look at this guy. I've got nine minutes. Um, what's it, what happens when you like a Google review? Eight and a half minutes from 200 people. You know, super practical tips on how to get B2B. 10 minutes. I had 182 people and the average time on this page was 10 minutes. Well, part of it's because so many of them are watching or they're reading through. So I have optimized this thing with multiple videos. This is an excellent article that's doing some really powerful stuff. In fact, let me show you this. This is really powerful. If I go to the search console and if I were to go to fit, uh, feedback wrench, let me show you what's actually happening for my website. And I think this will be really eye-opening for you. I'll show you how this all intertwines. So if I go back to analytics here, and I've just opened up that search console and another, uh, put them next to each other. There's all pages, but then there's also, if I go to site content and I go content drill down, this will show me a little bit more information around each one of these. And again, I could say for the page itself. So the page path, this is like, how much of my traffic came from a post? So forward slash post versus forward slash accountant website or our work, right? So of the, you know, 8,000 page views uh, or 6,900, you know, 43% of them came from a blog post. 21% came from the homepage. 8.34% came from this accountant thing. And you'll see, uh, we can also take a look at how the time on page was. So the average time on page when they were on these different places, that's that's pretty eye-opening. That's important, right? The, these are really important things. Now I can get into the events and I could go to like the top events. How many events did I have? Well, I have a, 
I have a couple of them here. So I have this Calendly thing, which is different, but I'm going to go to the action. And I know that there's a couple of goals. So we'll dive into that in just a second. But let me show you what's actually happening on my website. So on my website, when you come to the search console, immediately what you'll see is a basic performance thing. Generally speaking, you'll want to come to search results. So perf under performance, you come to search results. And then there, again, you'll have a couple different things. You have the type. It's either web, video, image, or news. We're going to say how long. Well, let's just look at the last 28 days. So over the last 90 days, I've had 7,000 clicks on my website. In the last month, I have had, you know, 2,300 clicks, 400,000 impressions. That's a pretty low click-through rate, but um, I kind of know why that happens. So as I, as I scroll down here, what you'll see is there's, here's the top queries that I'm getting. So my business name is number one. That means people actually know who I am. And then I'll just cut to the chase here. There's do hundreds and hundreds of iterations and, and variants that all get. So when Google Drive send files, how to find B2B clients, these queries can get overwhelming because there's so many different ways to ask it. But if you go to pages here, what this will show me is which pages are getting the most actual organic. And this is on Google. So when you go to Google, right, and you type Google in, this is showing us what's happening when I say how to get business clients, right, or B2B clients. And it'd be interesting to see if, if I'm in the top 10 or where am I at with this? I, I mean, I'm not even close. Definitely not there. How to get B2B clients. How to get B2B clients. Um, so here it is. Whenever you're in on a search, you're right here. Um, so long story short, let's just look through this a little bit. So this page, I had 24,000 impressions, 501 clicks. So you'll see the impressions just mean you showed up on like one of the, you know, one of these pages. I, and I don't even know if it's, you've shown up on, any of the returns or if it's the first page of Google, right? But what you can do here is you can kind of say, oh, look, what's working for me, right? So six figures or 16 clients. I know this article does pretty well. So if I, what I just did there is, again, if you remember, I went to search results and then I went to pages instead of queries. Now I can say, okay, this blog post is the second most successful blog, six figures or 16 clients, how to build a super profitable CPA and accounting firm. If I click on that, um, what I'll see is that uh, now it says page is the same set. Let's go to queries. So now I can see that this blog post is ranking for our accounting firms profitable. How do accounting firms make money? How to get 100 tax clients? How to build an accounting firm? CPA money. And if you look, there's hundreds of them. And I don't know how Google attributes these. I don't know how accurate they are. I mean, this is probably 600 of them of being like just one search. But what, again, the, the principle is, is if you just come to the pages, you can see what's going well for you, right? And uh, so liking a Google review, what is impacted? So this is kind of cool. Here on the Google Analytics, you're seeing everything that happens. And then in the Google Search Console, you're seeing exactly what searches are you ranking for? And what that'll do is it'll show you what's working and what, what you should improve on and what you should do more of and, and how should that look. So let's go back to this analytics. There's another thing that I really like to look at and that's acquisition. Now acquisition, I like going to all traffic and then I like looking at channels and sources, right? So channels are gonna tell us where is the traffic coming from. Um, so what you'll see here is of my 4,600, you know, we've got, 53% of it came from organic. So we have the users, the new users, sessions, which is just how many, you know, one, one user could get three different sessions um, because they come back. And then you have your bounce rate, right? So how, how badly did people just leave the page right away? Well, organic search, because I have those blog posts, have a really high bounce rate, right? But the lowest bounce rate I have here is if they came from social media or if they were a referral from YouTube. This is your pages per session. Look at the, the more pages per session means they clicked around your website and you'll see that there's some of these are two or three, some of them are really low. And that just means how many pages did they load on? Then you have your average session duration, which is a, how, how long does each session, not how long did they sit on page, but it's a, like a combination of how many sessions. Well, I know that if they came from social, 
they tended to spend the most time or other. And that, that could be a handful of things. Now what you'll see is there's this conversion thing. And this is why I like this. I can say of my goals, which are basically click on a phone, contact form, hit my email, or there's this profitable form uh, firm thing. So I, this is a lead magnet. And I can just see that my lead magnets are all coming from either. And this is funny. This is social, actually. It's misreading a lot of these, but I had 45 from social, 25 from direct. They're actually all from social, but 25 of them have told um, that they don't want tracking within Facebook. It's kind of funny. So if I go to like my contact page, I can show, um, well, I had 11 contact pages come from organic search. Four of them come from direct, three there, seven there. So I can see what's actually happening in fact if i come down here to conversions this will show me where you know here's my goals go to goal overviews or goal urls and we can see obviously the contact pages where most of it happens some of it's on the home page some of it's on this brand scripting and as you go to goal urls there's just lots of things that you can see in here you know we have calls to action that are similar on every page and you can see what actually is working um, to bring in clients so this is this is a really eye-opening thing, I think, when you can start, and it's all based upon getting your events firing in Google Tag Manager, taking those events, making them a goal. Remember, so we had an event, we went to admin, we made a goal, and that's really important. Now what I wanna do is I wanna show you a couple other really important things you need to do within Google Analytics here. Um, we're gonna go down here to the Google uh, custom or audience definitions. So. Audience definitions, we're gonna make groups of people for different things, okay? Uh, but before we do that, I, I almost feel like I should bring you into Google Ads so you can see how that can work because I'm gonna take some of these audiences and I'm gonna put them into Google Ads is really what I wanna do. So that'll be the third video. Um, if you have questions about Google Analytics and you're wondering how it works, uh, I'd love to know, ask in the comments if there's a video you'd like to see. I know this is just a quick overview of what this looks like. Let me show you a couple other really cool things. So uh, if you go to like that, again, I like acquisition because I just like seeing where's my traffic coming from. And if I go to all traffic, I like the sources and medium one. And when you go to sources and medium, uh, I will usually do like a weekly one. And then let me show you how to email these to yourself. This is kind of a cool deal. Um, basically what you'll do is you'll get your report that you like. And so here what I can see is Google Organic, Google CPC came from a Google ad. We've got direct where they just kind of came to your website. You have YouTube referrals, Facebook referrals. Um, this is a HubSpot email. I've got Bing Organic. We've got Baidu, Google My Business, and Facebook. And this is what did the contact form, I could say all goals. So in all goals, what's accomplishing, and really the contact form for me is the biggest one. Uh, so what I wanna look at is what this is. Now watch this, I can send a report. So when I go up here and I say share, what this will do is I can come in and I can say, all right, I want this to go to rob at feedbackrench.com and then I would name this email, Google Analytics All Traffic Acquisition. I'm gonna have it be a PDF, and I'm gonna run it weekly on Mondays or Tuesdays, Mondays, so I can see what happened. Um, Rob, here is the weekly acquisition report. So now you have to prove you're not a robot. And then I can hit send. And now every I will I will get that report weekly, and I can be in the know. The other thing you could do is you could edit this. There's some things you could do. You could add in different things. <laughs> That's a whole other deal. Uh, but if you save this report, if you were to have edited it and say hit save, then those could be up to your custom dashboard, and you can create a dashboard here. There's a lot of powerful things. We'll get into that. Um, right now, I'm just trying to show you the most basic things. We're gonna get into uh, Google Ads and Facebook Ads. Hopefully, this is helpful. Um, look to the next video here. We're gonna be diving into how to connect this to Google Ads next. Again, this is helpful, feedbackrench.com. Good luck, God bless.